How Sound is a magical place. You've got towering mountains on both sides, islands each with their own quirk and flair, and the beautiful shimmering light of the rolling seas. Who wouldn't want to come here? You can't help but feel like an ant next to a vast display of peaks. Bowen Island kind of sits in the middle of all of this beautiful scenery, which is why I want to showcase this beautiful piece of land to my channel. Hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of Keats94's Geocaching Adventures. I am here on a mission. I'm here on Bowen Island doing some exploring, but I'm also here to replace a geocache of mine that has somehow gone missing here on the shores of Snug Cove here. So let's go ahead and replace this thing on another episode of Keats94's Geocaching Adventures. navigating to my own cache. I'm about 16 meters away and I recall kind of where I hit it. I'm about seven meters away. I recall there being a steel cable nearby and it had rusted quite significantly. Oh, you know what? If I recall correctly, this was the area. I'm standing at three meters right now and yes, I'm looking for my own cache. This whole washout thing was not here before so I am wondering if the cash may have been washed away um, well or possibly washed away and then discovered by somebody walking along the beach thinking that it was litter freshly planted cedar tree in there so it's likely that they may have been doing some work in this area um, an area that I'm going to check just before I give up on actually searching for my old cache is up here where there was a steel cable. There is a steel cable. Okay. So this is a steel cable that's been here for many, many years. I'm going to assume that it was used uh, during the heydays of logging here. Um, just going to be absolutely certain before I plant this new replacement geocache if in fact my old cache is gone and I do not see any sign of it whatsoever so far. Now you may have remembered from my old episode and I'll supply a link to it in this episode you actually uh, you actually saw the container in that episode and the container was labeled so it's not like the container was, you know, hard to, hard to identify. It was in fact a geocache and anybody who knows what geocaching is and doesn't intend to steal them will usually leave them be. But this was definitely not here when I was last here. The geocaching reviewer that published this cache way back when has uh, told me you have 30 days before I archive it. Needless to say, I think I'm gonna have to replace this thing. I came prepared. Now this is a geocache that I had actually had sitting around in my room for a very long time. It used to be named differently. I just crossed out the name that I had originally called it and it has a fiddle on it because it was gonna be a fiddle music themed geocache. Uh, back when I created it, but now it's just going to be a replacement for this cool location. So, where to hide it in a good spot? Well, we could go up here. Now, if you're hiding caches near any water that is tidal, any water, highly recommended that you have the cache above the tide line. Um, I have definitely learned the hard way in many situations where I've, as a new geocacher, I've put the cache a little too closer to the ocean and the ocean took it away. Now, there's a hole in here, I wonder, can I just fit it in there like that? I'd have to cover it up pretty good. Is there anything living in here? Folks, I made, this is literally like the first thing that I, first hole that I spotted that could actually properly hide this thing. So we're gonna see if it fits. I'll put it in here. Does it fit? Not quite, but I guess what I could do, 
covered up with some, some branches and stuff. Um, we'll see. All right, one of the things that I uh, have to make sure is because this geocache was disabled originally, I'm going to re-enable it. Here we go. Watch it get re-enabled on the spot here. Aha, here we go. The cache is now enabled for the win, ready to be found. And as you can see, there was the reviewer note, me saying that I will tend to it, and then me enabling it with my enable log today. So there you have it, folks, fresh enabled. And for all those who have this geocache on their watch list, they're gonna get a notification saying that the cache is active. Super stoked that I was finally able to come out here and replace this very scenically located geocache. So here we are on the east side of Bowen Island and today in this episode we are going to be going onto the other side of the island to take a look and see what's going on over there. This is going to have to be for another episode so you're just going to have to subscribe to uh, figure out uh, when, when that episode is going to go live but I do hope to show you a really interesting part of this island. Um, it has to do with a bit of bushwhacking, a little bit of um, exploring and all that kind of stuff but uh, stay tuned for something uh, in the not too distant future I kind of hope to see if I can um, I can facilitate finding this geocache it is a five-star difficulty and five-star terrain cache it is called heart of the forest um, some of the local geocachers some of my local subscribers may might know it uh, they might very possibly have found it and I have not found it yet so stay tuned for that. Today is a little late. I'm being mindful of the daylight, so I'm not going to take any chances with that. But stay tuned because there will be some additional episode uh, coming as soon as I find the time to come back here and actually go for this very difficult, this very difficult and very high terrain cache. All right, folks, right now we are walking towards the northwest side of Bowen Island, a quieter part of the island. Folks, here we are at Galbraith Bay here on the northwest side of Bowen Island. And it is just a really super windy day right now. I just barely managed to get the drone in the air before I got a wind warning so really keeping that careful um, this is a really nice very quiet spot on Bowen Island here these days I am gonna buy a car but for now I am currently walking down Mount Gardner Road back to Snug Cove and the ferry to get me back to the mainland um, the buses here are very infrequent sometimes you may have to wait two sometimes three hours to wait for a bus to show up uh, depending on the weekends, weekdays, all that kind of stuff. And really, you just stand on the side of the road here and you flag down the bus. And the bus basically pulls over and picks you up. Basically like hitchhiking, but on safe public transit. 
Don't mind that dog barking in the background. Well, here we go. Gonna do us a bit of a detour and walk on down to good old Killarney Lake in Crippen Regional Park. Pretty cool little spot, a lake on an island. You can kind of see it through the trees here. Getting closer. Well, folks, thanks so much for watching another episode of Keith's 94's Geocaching Adventures here on YouTube. We went to Bowen Island and uh, replaced a geocache and saw some of the cool uh, sights and sounds of this area. And if you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button because there are more episodes to come every Saturday. So stay tuned and happy adventuring and happy geocaching.